Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and of course this is uh, Shackleton, the star of the show, and this is my uh, back scratcher uh, pointer. He's pretty mellow today, so we'll just leave him be. So in this video, I'm going to talk all about the Arctic sea ice. We know that the Arctic sea ice is rapidly vanishing. But the big question for climate science, the big question for our planet is how long will that take? When will we have the first blue ocean event? When we have an Arctic Ocean completely devoid of sea ice in, uh, in a September? You know, is it going to happen this year? Is it going to happen next year? Within five years, ten years? What, what are the time frames? I think the likelihood um, of it happening this year, of a blue ocean event happening, you know, we're already late July, almost into August. You know, uh, last year the melt season um, ended about September 21st. Usually it, go it ends about mid-September, September 15th or so. So I, I think that the probability or likelihood of, of having a blue ocean event um, within a few months is, is quite low. Um, Whereas I think by, say, 2022, 2023, I think the likelihood of a blue ocean event is extremely high. It's a game of probabilities. It depends on regional weather patterns in the Arctic. It depends. So we're getting, we get melt from above, so that depends on the um, air temperatures above the Arctic. We get melt from below, so that depends on the water temperatures under the ice which are greatly influenced by the influx of water uh, from the Pacific through the Bering Strait and also up uh, through the Atlantic, on the Atlantic side. It depends a lot on export um, through the Fram Strait. You know, if the export is high, that, that, that's a conduit for ice to get out of the Arctic Ocean. It depends on ice export through the Nair Strait, which used to be blocked off often by a an ice ridge and no longer is generally um, and it also depends on ice loss through the Canadian archipelago islands now the ice used to be ridged and there was a lot used to be a lot of multi-year ice around along the Canadian archipelago which would actually um, cause uh, excuse me uh, which would actually block the ice but now the ice is so fractured and broken and it's basically rubble it can actually filter through the Canadian archipelago islands it's been doing that a number for a number of years so that's another very big loss mechanism another big factor is um, you know it is very possible that 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 we can you know are we going to um, set a record year in the Arctic uh, are we going to beat 2012 I guess there's a whole new forum on Nevin's blog comparing 2012 to 2019. I'll t talk about some of the details of that. It's a toss-up. Um, in 2012, we had something called the Great Arctic Cyclone, which went through and chewed up the ice and spread it out um, in uh, late July, early August. If we have a similar event like that happening, you know, if we have a number of large cyclones going through the Arctic, chewing up the ice, and we could very well set another record minimum, but if we don't get those cyclones, you know, it's going to be a toss-up as to whether we have a record minimum this year. Um, also, you know, the more cyclones there are in the Arctic, the more waves that are kicked up, and those waves get under the sea ice, and they fracture it more, and they circulate water. They can actually mix the water. There's actually warmer, saltier water underneath the ice, and if that water comes up to the surface by mixing, by wave action, by currents, d d by different processes, we could um, we could have heavy melt of the sea ice from below. This is a time of year when we start getting a lot of melt is dominated by the um, water, the hot water underneath the ice, melting the ice from below. Also, the bathymetry of the Arctic is important in terms of setting where the ice edge is. Often the ice edge is parked at the edge of the continental shelves, for example, the Eastern Siberian Arctic Shelf, which extends far into the Arctic Ocean. And 
at that uh, the break between the shelf where it drops off to deeper water, we often get the ice edge because the water can actually um, uh, the, the the water is actually mixed differently on the shelf breaks. So that's another factor. So we have all of these factors uh, going on. So let me uh, go into some of the details. And you know, obviously, as the season proceeds, um, because of the key um, importance of the Arctic sea ice, um, you know, I'll have a number of other other videos on this, of course. So this is one of my go-to um, graphs here. This is the PO mass, which is a combined model data um, giving the ice volume. And this is the residual or the, ch so if we have a fit here, the red line, you know, is an exponential trend line going down. The difference of the black curve uh, from the red line is these residuals here. Um, so you can see, you know, we're above the red line here, we're below it, largely below it in 2012, the previous minimum, and so on. So this is the yearly minimum Arctic ice volume, okay? And you can see the trend, and the trend is still clearly going to zero by about 2024 or so. But what you can see is, you know, the fluctuations you can see here, but over here you get these lurching sort of fluctuations. Um, typically when you have a nonlinear system about to cross a threshold and have an abrupt change, you get a slowing down of the frequency. So you can get an increase of the perturbations of, or an increase in the amplification, right? The, the system undergoes a critical slowing down, it's called, which is a lowering of frequency. So you get larger negatives and larger positives. It looks like the system is reaching a breaking point. And many of the curves with sea ice seem to indicate that. Um, so if we follow the trends, you know, we have a 2020, just after 2020 here on the, uh, this is a 95% confidence in interval bands, these, these lines here. And so we're within the realm of possibility of 2020, no sea ice. Um, 20, in the 2020 to 2030, you know, 2025, 2024, but all we need is one of these lurching downward motions and the ice is gone. This is one of my critical go-to graphs, if you like, anchor graphs. And there's another one here. And what this shows, okay, so the green line is now the black line of the previous graph. So that's September. And what you can see is, so when September goes down to zero, it's, it pulls down other months. So we've got the purple is, um, October and the mauve or reddish pinkish is August. So August, September, October. Uh, August and October get pulled down with September when September goes to zero with the first blue ocean event. Then we follow with November and July. And then we follow with um, May. And then we follow with June and, and, uh, uh, um, Jan June and uh, January is it looks like it right so the other months all get pulled down and you know depending on how quickly they attract down to this blue ocean event state um, within about a decade I would say um, we have no sea ice in the Arctic whatsoever and we're in quite a different world okay so just a reminder, go to my website, paulbeckwith.net. Please consider donating to support these videos. Um, I do a tremendous number of videos as I try to educate you um, and the public on the risks and dangers from abrupt climate system change. Um, I was just recently talking about, it, it's weird, but a few days ago I did three videos on asteroids. Um, on the risks from asteroids and comets hitting the Earth. And then the very next morning, a city killer-sized asteroid called Asteroid 2019 OK barely missed the Earth. You know, what a cra crazy coincidence, right? We had an extremely close call. This asteroid was about six Earth diameters away, varied between 57 and 130 meters in size. We haven't narrowed that down yet going 24 and a half kilometers a second, and it just missed the Earth. Now, a 130 meter diameter um, 
If it was on the upper range, 130 meters, it would have hit with an energy of 260 megatons um, and caused a 2.6 kilometer diameter crater about half a kilometer deep. Fireball, 1.5 kilometers. This was an extremely close call, you know, definitely a, a city killer sized asteroid. So, you know, this is an, an, an example of a low probability but very, very high impact event, which makes the risk hard, hard to quantify. Climate change is a high probability event. In fact, it's hap abrupt climate change is happening now and the consequences are getting more and more severe. So the risk is obviously much easier to quantify and it is much, much higher. Okay, so Arctic sea ice graphs. This is the go-to site for um, all, anything and everything to do with the Arctic. This is the sea ice um, where we stand now, the ice concentration as of July 25th, 2019 in this image. And these are all, this is the sea ice extent pushing along record lows. So the extent is on record lows. The extent is any area with at least 15% ice, could be 85% water. All of these different satellites from different countries is detecting the ice rapidly going. And as a result, the temperatures and the temperature anomalies, especially where the ice has vanished, are extremely high. Okay, so this is a really the, the go-to site. Uh, you want to know anything about Arctic um, sea ice, go to Google Arctic sea ice graphs and bring it up. And the WIP neas mass graphs are the ones that I just showed you. It's this one here and it's this one here. Okay, um, so this is the uh, Bremen <coughs> ice uh, data um, and this is just for um, yesterday and what but this fluctuates a lot day to day so what you can see is you know this is ice concentration so 100 percent ice and then lower and lower concentration so all of this stuff here will go melts out in a couple of weeks um you know there's still quite a bit of export through the fram strait there's export through the nares strait there's export through the canadian archipelago and i said this is a fairly new and recent event um, there's influx of Pacific water through the Bering Strait going under the ice melting. There's influx from the Atlantic size, side um, water, warm water coming underneath the ice and melting. There's obviously melt on the surface from the um, you know, high air temperatures up in the Arctic. You can Google Earth Null School and look at the, look at the uh, two meter or surface temperatures and see that large parts of the Arctic um, ocean are above zero, so there's melt on the surface. There's a uh, fracture of the ice from wave action, breaking it up into smaller and smaller pieces, larger and larger surface area, increasing the melt. There's all of these things going on. Now the day-to-day -day value of this does fluctuate, so there is, there is uh, the impacts of clouds that can affect this data. So it's good that we look at all kinds of different data sources to try to tease out what's going on. Now this is a good site, cryosphere computing. You can just Google it and you can have a look at, uh, you know, this is the, the, the uh, sea ice uh, data, the area. Um, you get all kinds of different plots and things. It also covers Antarctica. And this is interesting, the Northern Hemisphere snow extent. Okay, um, so we have here, here's where we are right now. Um, and it divides it into Asia, Europe, Greenland, America and then it gives you the 2012 number in the faint line here so you can, can compare what's going on this year. Now of course um, you know it's it's all a question of albedo okay when there's lots of snow the arc those regions over the land are white because snow reflects a lot of energy when the snow disappears there's a lot more absorption clearly in the summer months as the sea ice goes you know, there's also a darkening. The Arctic has clearly darkened significantly um, in the last few decades. The average albedo or reflectivity of the whole Arctic used to be about 52%, and that's decreased to about 48%, and it's lower than that now. That's measured by something called the Ceres, C-E-R-E-S, satellite, a NASA satellite. Okay, so there's lots of good uh, data um, maps and plots, and th this is a DMI um, 
80 degree north, two meter temperatures, how you can see the fluctuation, you can see the trends in the 